welcome to the top 10 treasures of the Victoria Art Gallery. I'm John Bennington, and I'm the gallery manager, which houses the public art collection for the city of Bath. Although we're closed until Easter 2021, we still want to share some of our artworks with you. And so today I'm going to be talking about the top 10 treasures that are part of our permanent collection. When the Victoria Art Gallery reopens, you can come and see these pieces for free in our first floor gallery. In the meantime, please subscribe to our channel to see more videos like this one, or follow us on social media. All the links are below. Thank you. This little painting, uh, almost executed with miniature attention to detail, is by Sir Peter Blake. And the title is Daisy Fairy, and it was painted in 1981. And it's one of the stars of our collection. Peter um, grew up um, on the outskirts of London, and um, he, uh, his father famously had a shed um, in which he kept his model railways in the garden. And Peter was interested in art from a very early age, and, and so he had another shed where he pursued his art. And then he, he went to study at the Royal College of Art in the mid 50s. And he was one of a generation of, I mean, really kind of talented um, artists who all attended the, uh, including David Hockney, who all attended the Royal College of Art at the same time. And, uh, and so he went on to become really famous in the 60s as one of the earliest pop artists uh, with paintings that featured Elvis Presley and Marilyn Monroe portraits of himself uh, wearing jeans and jackets just covered with badges because he's always been interested in popular culture. So he, he attends wrestling matches and things like that. It was a, a sort of, a, it was a very fresh and a, a, a approach to art. And it kind of, it just came in on the back of the abstraction and it, and it came in so quickly that very uh, abstraction suddenly looked like old hat. But by the late sixties, he was very celebrated he, I think, was, it was becoming a bit, uh, constantly been in the spotlight. It was becoming wearing. He married um, an American artist called Jan Haworth, and they escaped the country um, in 1969, like his father had an abiding interest in steam railways. And this was the time when lots of branch lines were being closed down by uh, a man called Beecham. And he'd been tipped off that um, a bit of the Somerset and Dorset railway line, including um, Wellow Station in Somerset, uh, not far from Bath, uh, was going to be put up for sale and he bought it for a song, including a stretch of the railway line and a signal box, um, in which, which became his studio. So for 10 years, this became their rural idyll. And, and he stopped painting his pop art subjects and instead reverted to the, a lot of Victorian tradition and Victorian um, the way the Victorians handled paint and their attention to detail, become ve he became very interested in that and even started painting fairy pictures. He was given a show at the Tate Gallery in 1982 and Daisy Fairy featured in it. But it wasn't, he had a daughter, his daughter was called Daisy, but it's not a portrait of her. Um, it's, uh, although the title may reference her, um, he generally painted from magazine clippings photographs, things like that. Um, so he clipped this little picture, uh, copied it, and then put it in an, an Indian frame because Peter's always been a magpie collector. He probably found this Indian frame on the Portobello Road market or somewhere like that. And I, my guess is that the picture was shaped to fit the frame and he married them together when they were finished. Um, so it's an absolute little jewel of a painting. Um, and it, but for us, it encapsulates his time when he was living very close to Bath um, at, at a, this Wellow village called Wellow. And um, Peter still owns property in that village. So he's never, part of his heart is actually still in our area and he loves visiting the gallery. Um, we bought this artwork um, by Blake about 10 years ago, 12 years ago maybe. And, uh, but because of um, the artist's um, strong local connections. Um, in, those, in that era, Bath had a lot of antique shops 
and antique markets. And he, he used to come into Bath, visit the circus, because he loves circuses as well, and then trot around the, the shops just picking up things. Um, so, yeah, it, it's, um, it, it's, that there is part of him still in, in, this, in Bath and still in Wellow. This little picture is its very typical stylistically of Peter's work in terms of its attention to detail um, and the kind of amazing control of the brush that he has. He was part of a group at that time called the Brotherhood of Ruralists. Um, they didn't live together, but they, they would come together um, in their different homes um, and, uh, and they sort of shared that same ethos of kind of looking back to um, 19th century tradition. So it was a strange thing to do at the time, but they, um, they very quickly became known for it. I think it took a lot of courage um, for any artist that period to do what they did um, and to kind of overturn uh, um, the way contemporary culture was moving then, because art was then becoming very conceptual, um, so there was a different vibe going on. Blake always maintained his friendships and uh, on one occasion they went, uh, he went with another artist called Howard Hodgkin, who's also in our collection, to visit David Hockney um, in Hollywood. Um, and um, so they, so our painting I think reflects uh, that history, that part of his life. Um, and. Uh, is actually, yeah, I, I would say is, is very typical of his work at that time. Thank you for watching. If you've enjoyed this video, don't forget to like or add a comment. I look forward to seeing you next time.